So this lesson here is going to be talking about current electricity calculations. And there are a whole bunch of little equations we need to go through. The pattern you're going to see through the equations we're going to look at is that if you know two variables, you can solve for the third. So the first one we're going to talk is we're going to talk about how we describe charge. Now what this occurs from, this is electricity is caused by electrons traveling through a wire. Now if we know how many electrons there are, and we know how much force each electron has, then we can figure out the total charge that's running through the wire. So this is formula Q equals NE. N represents the number of electrons. Now if we're looking at E, what this is doing is this is looking at the charge, or you can think of it as force, of one individual electron. Now as far as we're concerned, this is a constant number. This number would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Cs. Because when we're measuring charge, the units are known as coulombs, C-O-U-L-O-M-B, or capital C for short. So for an example question here, we're going to look at trying to figure out how much charge is produced by 5 million electrons traveling through a wire. And yet again, if we know two, we can solve for the third. So we know that we're dealing with electrons, so therefore the charge of one electron is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Cs. And the number of electron is 5 times 10 to the 6. So if we use the formula, Q is equal to NE, we plug those in, So if we plug this into our calculator, we find that the answer here is 8 times 10 to the negative 13 coulombs. Now if you've ever worked with electricity, you may never heard of, you may never heard of coulombs before. That's because we tend not to think of electricity in those terms. One of the terms that we think about is the terms of current. So current is the rate of charge flow. So the amount of charge moving past the point by, past the point by the time taken. So what I would think of this as is if you think of this as being like a river. If you think of it like a river, this would be the rate at which the water is flowing downstream. So you can figure out how much force the, elect the water has as it goes downstream by putting your hand in there. We can do the same thing with electricity, except in this case we'd electrocute ourselves. So the formula in this case would be I is equal to Q over T. So as we talked about in our previous slide, this right here represents the charge. And the charge is again measured in coulombs. So it's how many electrons are passing by in their total force. So now here, the difference between the last equation and this equation is the last equation looked at the, how much force they have. This is more of a rate. So this is a force per unit time. Now in this equation, we use seconds. It's going to vary back and forth based on what we're looking at. So Q represents current, and current would be coulombs per second. But none of us ever call it that. What we call it is A, or amps. So with our first question here, it's going to ask us how much current is produced from 1400 Cs passing through a dryer in 2.25 minutes. So let's list what we know. We know that our time is equal to 2.25 minutes. Now we can't work with 2.25 minutes. We have to work in seconds. And that works out to be 135 seconds. We know our charge is equal to 1400 C. What we don't know is the current. So if we plug in, I is equal to Q over T. And we plug in our numbers. We find that the current in this case is 10.37 amps.
The next equation we're going to look at is electric potential. <clears throat> you probably have never heard of electric potential. You're more likely to have heard of something called voltage. Now, voltage is important because that every uh, outlet in Canada, or even in North America, is standardized. They all produce the same amount of voltage. The only thing that ever varies between devices is the amount of current. So if we use the analogy before of current being like water in a stream, you can think of electric potential being like water over a, of over a waterfall. So if you have your waterfall right here, and you have the water flowing along here, you can think of all the potential energy it's got at the top. And eventually what's going to happen is that the water is going to fall over and it's going to go down. Now as it goes down, it loses potential energy. So you can think of voltage as being releasing the energy from the electrons, just like the water loses potential energy as it goes over the hill. So our equation then in this case is that voltage is equal to delta E over Q. So just like our previous examples, Q represents charge, which is measured in coulombs. And we have delta E, this is measured in energy, this is energy, and this is measured in joules. The last piece we're going to look here is at voltage. Now common sense tells us that our voltage units should be in joules per charge, joules per coulomb, but we don't think of it that one. We think of it as V, which is a volt. So for example, in this question, a shock from a friend transfers 150 joules of electrical energy through a potential difference of 500 joules, 500 volts. What is the quantity of charge that's transferred in this spark? So this question's a little bit, so we can go through this. We now know that we've got voltage, and our voltage is written as 500 volts. We know our energy. Our energy is 150 joules. What we are looking for is we're looking for the quantity of charge. And if we're looking for quantity of charge, that makes Q our unknown. So we're going to take these and we're going to plug them into our equation. And when we solve for Q, you're going to see that in this particular case, our Q is equal to 0.3 Cs.